Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and in a previous episode we have made a printer port for my phone and a lot of people asked hey could you add Wi-Fi to that printer so it's connected on the network and I thought hey that's a really good idea let's build that. So we have made a custom PCB that allows us to attach a parallel port printer to a USB device and basically it runs a custom made driver for that printer. That chip already has Wi-Fi on board so I would think maybe this is a software only project. So let's first start with porting over some software to this board and let's try to make the printer print over the network. Usually on this channel we start with exploring the hardware that we need and then we take care about the software. In this case we have basically built the hardware in the printer port episode and we have also delved into the software at the warehousing system episode. So we basically combine these two skills and then we should be able to get a printer on the network. Let's start with experimenting with the code to see if that basically works out with the hardware that we have. Of course our time is limited so we show you the main points in this video and if you want to have the deep dive on the code and stuff then go to the Element 14 community linked below and check out the full coding segments as a bonus video. Welcome to my computer. We're now taking a look at the code that is flashed onto the ESP32S2, which basically runs a web server and that is meshed together with the code that we used last time to make it print from USB. Of course, we have to include some libraries. We need to set our credentials for Wi-Fi and we have one input parameter, which is the text that we are going to send over to the printer. We set a static IP, so I always know where that printer is in my network. We have a max character length of 80 per line. That means after 80 characters, we need to have a character return and line feed. These are the pins for the uh, parallel port. And then starting here, this is an HTML page. And as you can see, I've already used ASCII art inside this sketch, so it's also displayed in ASCII art on the web server. And the rest of the code is exactly the same as we had for our previous project. If you want to see the deep dive on that, it's on the Element 14 community. Seems we have a basic framework running. So we have a web server running on our custom hardware that basically waits for a command that he sends on to the printer, like a piece of text. And if you do that over and over again, we can print a full page. So let's try that out and see if it basically works out of the box. Okay, it seems we have a bit of an issue. Like it works when I send commands over USB and then it prints it out. But when I try to use Wi-Fi with the new code uh, and I connect the printer to it, then the unit basically Wi-Fi breaks. It doesn't reboot, it still runs, but just Wi-Fi loses connection, so I can't access the web server anymore. That's strange. Why would it do that? I tried it in different ways, like connecting the printer first, then powering everything up, or making sure the web server is established, then connect the printer and power it up, but it's always the same result. If there is a printer connected and it's powered on, then the Wi-Fi breaks. We may need some bit of investigation in this case. Good evening, uh, Inspector Clemambo, LAPD. I hear there's a case of breaking Wi-Fi. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. And could that be that it happened while you were, let's say it that way, I don't want to invade in your privacy, but as you engaged with your printer over here. Ah, yes. And you, you do realize that it's 
uh, there's an, let's say, an age difference between you two. I didn't want to invade on your privacy, but it's obvious that the uh, the printer is like 30, 35 years old, if I'm not mistaken, and you have been pretty much in existence for a week or so. Could that be the case? Ah, uh, yeah. So maybe there is uh, like a difference in in logic levels, let's say it that way, which is common with relationships of that kind. Oh, one more question. Did that breaking Wi-Fi always happen when you reset the printer? It did. So maybe the acknowledgement of a reset is what breaks the Wi-Fi. That could be a very valuable hint. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks to the inspector, we now know that there is an age gap problem in here. Or basically it's not an age gap, it's logic levels. While we have confirmed in the last episode about the dot matrix printer that the different logic levels overlap in certain regions, so zero and one can be distinguished. We also now know that incoming signals to the microcontroller may throw it off balance. So the microcontroller has clamping diodes on its inputs. These are to protect it from overvoltage. It can only protect it so far, but basically in the event that a big voltage spike occurs, then basically this voltage would get fed through to the ground plane, protecting the microcontroller, but that also disturbs the ground reference for the antenna. And I think that is what basically breaks Wi-Fi. So it loses connection and you have to manually re-establish that. So basically with a failsafe you could automate that, but I think it would do that every time the printer tries to acknowledge that there has been new data present on the bus and it has accepted it. So every time the acknowledge or the busy pin go high, maybe there is a big too much of a spike that goes beyond 5 volts and that can't be fully discharged by the clamping diode, so I think in those cases Wi-Fi breaks. The way we prevent this is basically doing it properly this time. We basically need some logic level conversion. Let's try to design that in and first test the theory on a breadboard. Here's my breadboard circuit. Basically it's just a new connector, some logic level converters and this gets uh, connected to our original device. Basically, we put logic level conversion in form of these little modules in between the port and the microcontroller. And that should do the trick. The Arduino on here is only here to provide power because we need to have two voltage sources, 3.3 volts for the MCU side and 5 volts for the printer port side. So this Arduino doesn't do anything besides giving it power. And we also have to redesign, of course, the PCB once this is proven to be working because we need both stable voltage sources. Now that we have proven that the unit works with logic level conversion, we have to be a bit finicky with it because like on breadboards, sometimes the contacts aren't that good. So it printed a bit of garbage until I basically re-wiggled all the connections and now it does print properly. So we know that is working. And now let's hop over to KiCad, design a new PCB, send that off to Isla, assemble it, and then we have finally a Wi-Fi enabled 35 year old printer. Hi, I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight, where we explore the world of electronics in the realm of DC, audio frequencies, RF, and into the visible spectrum of light. Here we take electrical engineering topics out of the boring old textbook and bring them into life through demonstration and test. Sometimes we even build stuff, and if there's a way to test the concept at hand, we'll put it on a scope and measure it, and in doing so, hopefully bring it to daylight. So if that sounds like a good time to you, come hang out with me every couple weeks here at Element 14 Presents. All right, see you there.
Welcome again to my computer. We have verified some problems that we had with the electric design or the electronics design. In that case, it's about logic levels. So what I've did is I updated my schematic with some changes. And here they are. Basically, we put pre-made logic level converters in between those pins because that was the fastest solution for me. If I would do that on a production PCB, of course, I wouldn't use these pre-made modules. I would either implement the same circuit directly on the board with discrete transistors or use a logic level converter IC. I have did the math and at current pricing, which are a bit insane, two logic level converter chips would be cheaper than doing this all discreetly. So take that with a grain of salt because it can always change. We have also changed the USB design to just a regular USB B plug because I want this to be really sturdy. And I've chosen a, a, a red one, pretty uncommon. And a red one only means this is used to power. It's not meant for constant data transfer. This is a power USB port. And that's on purpose because what we need is just power. Of course, it listens to the USB port for programming and stuff but we actually only want to power it via USB, split that off via our 3.3 volt regulator. So we get 3.3 volts for the microcontroller and still have five volts on the VBUS for the five volt logic segments. So we only use that one for power. And when we translate this over into a PCB design, we got it fairly compact. I've left a bit more space than needed just so I have an easier time populating and debugging it if necessary. And we have three buttons here that I don't really use in my implementation, but they may come in handy in the future. And I've also done something here. As you can see, here are caps in parallel. These are for SMD or 603 caps, and these are for uh, THT ones, so through hole parts. This is just if I don't have those caps handy, I can just use the other ones. And also if somebody of you wants to assemble that design, you can, don't have to solder these tiny parts. You can solder everything by hand. The module and the voltage regulator are pretty easy to solder by hand, even though they are surface mount parts. And we can also look at that in 3D, but I haven't loaded the models in. But something that I really like on the back whoop, is that it says ASCII Arc Printer and by my MX on the back, and that is ASCII Art. The web server on the ESP32S2 basically shows us an interface where we can just send some letters to it, click on print, and it does the printing. But what it actually provides is an API. You just have to use the uh, get command with a service like Postman or in a Python script or a similar or in a curl script on your command line to make the printer print stuff. So the easiest way to get all the commands is use Postman to try them out until they work like you ex uh, expect them to. And then we write some custom Python code that takes in a file reads it line by line, sends it to the printer, and basically makes it print out that file. It's kind of the program that drives a printer, a driver. So that's a printer driver. It's not included or any uh, entangled with the kernel on Linux or something like that. It's the, the, the kind of printer driver you had back in the day on DOS and Windows machines that you really hated because it only worked with that specific program that you have to start manually. So it's not that great, but I tied it in with my operating system to just use the command print and then the file that you want to print and then it sends it over the network and just prints it out. Just sending it over via get requests or line by line or with the web server interface is not very convenient. So I wrote a Python script that basically indexes all the lines in a document and then sends it over line by line. I've made three versions of those. We just look at one, which is the combined version. 
this specifically lets you say print this file and then it does it or you can just start the program and it will ask you for the file and i've also provided two versions that do only one of those options so either you have to pass it as an argument or it asks you afterwards so you can see how that works in practice i have made two versions of that code one that takes in arguments from the command line like you say print.py and this file and the other one you start by print.py and then it asks you for the file and i combined those two into one program that basically doesn't care if you provide a file to print then it will just print that file and if you don't then it will ask for it so let's print some stuff that we have on a computer some example texts and ascii art send that to the computer and enjoy printing over wi-fi with an old printer In this video, we have taken a project, some viewer feedback and made it better. Better, faster, stronger, and also with Wi-Fi. So now you can Wi-Fi-fi any old parallel port printer and put it on the network and use it like a really modern machine. A very satisfying project. I got to learn about water's level conversion, more about web servers and I really like that this project also has the artistic component because on the back side it says ASCII art printer and it's written in ASCII art. If you have more ideas for stuff that we can build on the show, improve older projects or maybe something totally new, tell us on the Element 14 community. I would love to build something that the community came up with. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.